Well, I love your business model. I do too. Uh, one of the things that I don't like about the syndications is obviously it's still one uh, project. And the thing that you talked about earlier is trying to predict the value of the property at the um, liquidity event at the end when everything's finished. Uh, if your return is heavily weighted on the end value, you have no way of knowing if that's going to be the case or not. Mm -hmm. I mean, you might have the, of course we can't predict the black swan events like we had with the pandemic, but uh, that's why I like the, the income model on the front end. Exactly. Exactly. You have that. That's much more predictable. You have that predictability. You, you, you know, I see so many of these funds set up and it's like, all right, for the first four years, you're not going to get any income, but you're going to make 30% on your money at year five. And it's like, yeah, you, there's a lot of things that can happen between now and year five. <laughs> yeah. One of our, one of our infinite infamous one liners is our models are always wrong. They're either wrong <laughs> in the right direction or wrong in the wrong direction, but nothing goes exactly like you think it will. And mm -hmm. For those of us listening, as you're considering investing in private real estate vehicles, whether it's a fund or syndication, there's a, there's a couple of things you should look at. And one common term that kind of universally expresses the return profile of a syndication or a fund is something called IRR. And IRR stands for internal rate of return. And that's basically a time weighted calculation based on a series of cash flows. It's almost like an annualized return on investment. And IRR can sometimes be massaged in ways that make a deal look better than it might actually be. So I'll give you a quick example. So Bill, you give me $100,000 today, in six months, I give you back 150. You made a $50,000 profit on 100, you did it in exactly six months, that's 100% IRR because you did a 1.5 multiple in half a year, right? That's a good return, that's a good multiple. So same example, let's say you give me $100,000 today, and tomorrow I give you back 101. So your IRR is 365%, which might seem like a great return, but you're not happy because you only made a thousand bucks and you got your money back. So <laughs> it's, it's folks look at different opportunities out there. Don't just think about IRR. Also look at your total multiple on your invested capital. And by that, I mean, how much profit will you realize over the life of the vehicle as a percentage of the money you put into the vehicle? Mm -hmm. And when does that profit occur? So, for example, on the multiple side, let's say that we could, uh, or Bill or anybody could double your money in five years. So if you doubled your money in six years, that's still a really good return. You're happy whether you do a 2X in five years or six years, but in the six year scenario, your IRR or your time weighted return is gonna be substantially less. So as you examine these different vehicles out there, try to balance that total multiple over the life of the opportunity against what is probably hopefully a healthy IRR, but also understand when those distribution events happen. And to your point you made earlier, um, if you're looking at a deal that's a 50% IRR, but 95% of that return is predicated on an event five years from now, um, that's not a very safe assumption to make. So yeah. try, to, try to look at opportunities through all those lenses and you, you, might, uh, you might find yourself um, being a little more informed on various risk profiles. Mm -hmm. so, so for all of you out there who like Excel, would, would, would Jake just said is if you take someone's IRR model and then you use Excel and use the X IRR function, the X takes in the time out the time into account. So then it quantifies that return based off the time exposure of the investment. So that's when people send me pro formas with IRR returns, I rerun them with an X IRR, you know, with the dates of the allocation of the, of the, you know, capital coming in and then it blends that, with the time frame, so that is if XIR, that's the, the the function, the formula in Excel that you would want to use to to do exactly what uh, Jake just said. 